Hello everyone, it's your favourite thinking skills expert here, back again with another topic tutorial. Now in today's video, we're going to be going through a very famous type of thinking skills question that showed up in last year's OC and Selective and will very likely show up in the future years to come. I'm talking about, of course, whose reasoning is correct. Now before I start the video, I just want to announce that I'm a thinking skills teacher and I'm looking for just a handful of students to personally mentor for the 2023 Selective. So if that's something that interests you, visit my website at www.cortexacademy.com.au for more information. Anyways, cue the intro. Whose reasoning is correct is a question type that involves a passage of information inside a box, two speakers each drawing a conclusion based off the information in the box, and in this question, it's your job to figure out which speaker has arrived at the conclusion through a logically correct line of reasoning. Now, I love this question, not only because the formatting looks the same every single time, but also because when you break it down, it's actually much more basic than it seems. If we break down reasoning, we can see that there are only two ways that reasoning can be correct and only three ways that reasoning can be incorrect. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. A speaker's reasoning can be correct if their conclusion draws directly from the passage and nothing but the passage making not a single assumption along the way. On the other side, a speaker's reasoning can be incorrect if their conclusion is based off information that's not explicitly mentioned in the passage. Let's use an example to demonstrate all the different types of reasoning. Let's say, if it rains today, I will bring an umbrella to school. We can simplify this into a simple cause and effect of rain today, arrow, bring umbrella to school. Now let's say speaker one comes along and says, it has rained every single day this week and it has not stopped yet. So I will bring an umbrella to school today. That speaker will be correct because long story short, it rained today. So indeed they will bring their umbrella to school. Let's say speaker two then says, it is wet outside right now, so therefore, I will bring an umbrella to school today. That speaker will be incorrect. Why? Well, because they assumed that wet outside is the same as saying it rained today. In this case, the speaker twisted the words of the passage to try arrive at their conclusion. And that's a common theme you'll see amongst these incorrect reasonings. Now on to harder types of reasoning. The other two ways reasoning could be incorrect is if the speaker does what we call a converse or a conjugate. Now, a converse is when the speaker reverses the logic of the passage. So in this case, if a speaker says, I brought an umbrella to school today, therefore it must have rained, that speaker is doing a converse and they would be incorrect because rain causes you to bring your umbrella. But Bringing your umbrella does not necessarily mean it must have rained. It might have been sunny, it might have been a photo day, we don't know. Now a conjugate is quite similar. It's when the speaker reverses the keywords in the passage. So in this example, let's say a speaker says, it didn't rain today, so I won't bring my umbrella. Have a little think. That speaker is going to be wrong. Because if it didn't rain today, I could still bring my umbrella, right? It still might be very sunny. It could still be a photo day, right? Not raining doesn't mean I can't bring my umbrella anymore. Now, what happens if I combine converse with conjugate? If I reverse the logic and the keywords? Well, in that case, two wrongs do indeed make a right. And you end up with a contrapositive. 
the other way that reasoning can be correct. Let's give you an example. Let's say a speaker says, if I didn't bring my umbrella to school, then it mustn't have rained today. Have a little think. That speaker is going to be correct. Because if that per speaker didn't bring the umbrella, how could it have rained? Because if it did rain, they would have brought their umbrella in the first place. So the fact that they didn't can only logically mean it didn't rain that day. Okay, wow, that was a lot. I just condensed a two hour lesson into like a seven minute video. So I'm gonna put up a little summary table here. Feel free to pause and have a look through it. Now, if you're in year five and you want to learn more from me, just jump on my website at www.cortexacademy.com.au. But until then, I'll see you guys later.